Hey buddies, Sunnuts Guy here. Hope you're having an awesome day so far. In this video, we're going to be going through 10 really quick tips that you can be using in Valheim, depending on what stage of the game you're at. Oh, I feel cold. And um, my last video was a little bit more of a long-winded beginner's guide for the first few stages of the game. This is going to be more like 10 quick tips that you can utilize, depending on which stage of the game you're at. And we're going to be quick firing through these for you guys, nice and swiftly. All right, let's go. Tip one, you can see your active buffs here in the Raven to find out what they are doing for you. Rested is a fantastic buff. So tip number two is be rested all of the time. Rested gives you a bonus 50% health regeneration and a bonus 100% stamina regeneration. You gain a rested bonus by resting near a campfire. If you rest in your home, you can have an increased resting bonus by increasing the comfort value. You'll see in the top right corner it says resting comfort 5. That should give me a 12 minute rested bonus. However, you don't need to do that because tip number 3, or kind of part of tip number 2, we're not going to cheap you out. We'll, we'll include this tip number 2. We're going to give you we're going to give you another 8 tips on top of this. So if you pull out your hammer, you bring it out with you in the world, you place a campfire down anywhere at all, and you sit next to this, you will see that it says resting comfort one at the top that will give me an eight minute buff so really because you can place this anywhere in the world you have no excuses not to have a permanent rested buff and again that's a permanent 50 percent health regen 100 percent stamina regen phenomenally valuable no reason not to have it at all times all righty tip three markers in valheim markers are very very valuable you've got a completely blank map and only a few certain icons will appear on the map for you and then you want to create your own icons for various things. As an example, I highlight all copper and tin deposits and other various things where like where you might be good for hunting necks or just anything you might want to mark down. You can create a marker by selecting the icon you want to create it for and double clicking on the map and then you can name it and press enter for that marker to be created. Now if you have then say, say you had a copper, uh, copper deposit over here, you've completely depleted that deposit, it's no longer there. Instead of deleting the marker with right click, I would mark the, cross the marker off. This means that later when you're looking for new places to search for copper, you'll know where you've already been and emptied out so that you can say, hey, I don't need to go this way, maybe let's go up a little bit further or whatever the case may be. Markers are very, very useful. Tip four, buried treasure. If you see a rock formation that looks kind of like this, this one's a little tough to see because it is in and amongst the woods. But you see these arrangement of rocks that go in kind of like a ship shape. Kind of looks like the shape of a ship. There is buried treasure somewhere within this shape. So what you're gonna wanna do is start at one end probably and just mine your way down a little bit. Now in this game, you cannot create tunnels. So if you start mining down, you will then, and then mine straight, you'll pretty much be mining at the same level, although it will veer slightly upwards a little bit. So, oh, and look, we're very lucky. So we've just been hitting this a little bit and we found the chest. There is one chest and several skeletal remains. The skeletal remains just give you bones, which you can also get from skeletons. So once you found the chest, don't bother uh, picking out the rest of it. And, uh, and that was actually really nice and easy. Sometimes you might have to uncover the whole area to get the chest. Tip five, quick one. You actually run slightly slower with any kind of weapon out. So if you're holding a bow or an ax, you will actually run 5% slower. It shows there at the bottom of the screen, 5% slower. And it'll also show you your total uh, reduction of movement speed depending on what items or gear you're using at the time. Tip six, burial chambers. Burial chambers are these like little dungeon looking things that are dotted around the map. There are many, many, many of them and they have some of the core components that you're going to need to progress through the game. Now, they are close quarters combat, so I would recommend bringing a shield. I should have brought mine, yep. Yeah. I recommend bringing a shield, and I recommend bringing a mace. Now, in the next tip, I'll explain why. Alrighty, so here we are for tip number seven. We're in a burial chamber, and we've got a skeleton here. A skeleton! Um, and the, this tip is all about different types of weapons, different types of damage, and how they affect or how, uh, how they uh, interact with different types of enemies. Now, skeletons here are weak to blunt damage. If you check your mace, it says blunt damage there around the middle. And there's also different, uh, different, there's slash damage and there's also pierce damage from the spear. 
Now, different enemies are uh, critically wounded by different types of damage. Skeletons, blunt damage is the way to go. And you can tell that you're getting using the right type of damage because the damage number should be yellow. You see that yellow 31? That means that it's the right type of damage. Now, if I switch to my axe, which is slash damage, hey, stop running away. You'll see I hit him for a white number. That means it's unaffected. And let me try the spear. I'm not sure. This may be... Yeah, so that number is gray and deals much less damage. Pierce damage does almost nothing to skeletons. Yellow is for good damage, white is for standard, and gray is for terrible. Alrighty. Tip eight, collect as many blueberries and raspberries as you possibly can. Because blueberries and raspberries can't currently be farmed so you'll want to hold on to as many as you can because they'll be used in ingredient as ingredients for later stages of the game food i actually ended up eating a lot of my berries at the beginning uh you want to try to avoid this mushrooms and meat are a great way to start yellow mushrooms can be found in cage uh caves 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 and red mushrooms found out in the wild collect as many mushrooms as you can and i normally go i need to cook it but i normally go mushroom mushroom meat at the beginning save all your blueberries and your raspberries for later game food Tip 8, and this one's just a really quick one. Um, I found this very, very useful. I didn't expect it to work, but it does. You can actually jump while charging your bow shots, and you can actually release that shot in the air as well. So as an example, if you're running away from an enemy, you can start charging your bow, jump, turn and fire, and then keep running away again. So uh, that's nifty. That's definitely saved my butt and allowed me to do some additional DPS uh, along the way. Oh no, we're on fire! Um, just a nifty little trick that can uh, help you out in certain situations. Tip 10. There are various ways to deal bonus damage in Valheim. One we've already covered, which is using the right weapon type against the enemy that you're facing. The second is through recognizing when your enemy is staggered. If you hit an opponent, let's put a spear on so we deal less damage. If you hit your opponent or hit an enemy um, and you see them stagger, they kind of go backwards and put their arms in the air. Let's see if we can get them to do that. Um, if you hit them, when they are staggered, you will deal bonus damage. So let's see if we can get that to work for you. There you go, that guy's staggered, and I didn't hit him fast enough because I wanted to see that he was staggered. Next time he's staggered, I'm gonna attack straight away so you guys can steal the extra damage. There's an audio cue, oh, these guys are closing up. There's an audio cue for it, and there is also a, a visual effect to it as well. There's another dude around here, let's, let's find him. Let's fight him, let's take him out. So we can show you the stagger. Here he is. There, hey, buddy. This guy's bigger. Hopefully he lasts a little bit longer. Cool. So we're going to pull our weapons out. He's a Great Dwarf rank 2. Cool, man. So we hit him. And as soon as he as soon as soon you see him staggered, I'm going to hit him again so you see the bonus damage. But stagger, bam. You see the red sparks fly off. You hear the, you hear the sound effect. That means that you have a, uh, successfully hit like a crit, like a critical strike when they're staggered. Um, so that's uh, that's how that works and it can really help you deal some bonus damage It works with arrows as well, but the drawback time on arrows is quite long So if you see that an enemy is staggered don't draw your bow fully back Let that arrow fly a little bit sooner you know sooner rather than later so you can get the bonus from the stagger effect The last one is sneaking up on your enemy. So let's find ourselves an enemy that we can sneak up on all right, so we got a couple of dudes coming towards us here. We're gonna try and backstab one of these guys. So they're gonna go around that side of the rock. I'm gonna sneak around, ooh, they're gonna split up. Oh, they're splitting up and going around either way. These guys are geniuses. All right, now they, they didn't see me. I'm still sneaking. I'm gonna get the shot with a bow. We can backstab with a bow and we should see about 100 damage. Bam, 101 damage. Now I normally hit for around 37, 35, 30-ish damage. So that's the triple damage numbers we get from the backstab. The melee backstab works the same way. As long as you are undetected, the target that you're hitting has not detected the words detected you, i.e. they don't have that red exclamation mark above their name, then your backstab will work and hit for 30 uh, for triple damage. Some weapons do more than that though. So if you want to be a sneaky ninja, if you want to be a sneaky ninja, grab yourself a dagger, improve your sneak skill, grab yourself some troll armor, because that'll improve your sneak as well. Here's a sneaky tip number 11 for those sneaky deaky individuals. And, uh, and yeah, man, that's how that works. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. I'm going to do, be uh, doing a lot more of these. I've got a list of tips that I want to do. I want to do them in bite-sized chunks, 10 tips at a time. Do them quickly, concisely, not like the long-winded first sort of beginner's guide I did, but quick and concise tips that you guys can utilize straight away, depending on what stage of the game that you are at. So yeah, subscribe for more content like this. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.